Hi friends! At the beginning I note that today we will consider a circuit of a device operating from mains without galvanic isolation. You must keep all safety rules when working with mains voltage. Don't touch the operating circuit, be careful at adjustment, make sure that the device is disconnected from the mains. Everyone knows how to regulate a constant voltage. There are many ways and there are a lot of circuits of regulated power supplies in the net. But sometimes in practice it is required to regulate an alternating voltage, for example the mains. This is necessary for testing equipment for resistance to voltage surges, as well as for experiments during the adjustment of any homemade products powered by the mains. The main and perhaps the most popular way of adjustment is the laboratory auto transformer of latter. Another method is electronic using phase pulse power regulators. The disadvantage of phase pulse regulators are the large ripples entering to mains, as well as the shape of the output signal, which differs from the sinusoid. As we found out in one of my videos, the dimmer cuts off the initial sign and this isn't good for many devices. Latter doesn't distort the sinusoid, it is just a single winding transformer, but not everyone has it. One of the options of regulation was presented by Yantsev in the fourth issue of the magazine Modelist Constructor in 1990. This is perhaps the simplest and the most affordable regulator of this type. I wanted to test it and see what it can do and initially I didn't plan to shoot a video, but later, as often happens, I changed my mind and decided to turn on the camera. I think many people will be interested. So, about the circuit. The voltage regulator in theory doesn't interfere with mains because here the principle of adjustment is impulse. According to the author, the circuit can be used to adjust the power of the soldering iron, the brightness of the lamps, the speed of the motors and even the voltage of the transformers from 0 to 220 volts. The maximum power is about 100 watts if you use one transistor but in theory you can connect a large number of transistors in parallel and remove as much power as you like, simultaneously increasing the power of the rectifier. A low power transformer is used only to form a control voltage for a transistor. The variable resistor sets that voltage. By changing voltage at the base, we can force the transistor to open as much as we need, thereby changing the output voltage. The author recommends using resistors with a power of at least 2 watts. I found only such a 50 watt monster. Another resistor limits the base current. A protective diode prevents the base of the transistor from a negative signal. The regulating element is a powerful high voltage bipolar transistor. In this case, a KT840B transistor is used. This is a fairly powerful NPN transistor with a collector emitter voltage of 350 volts and maximum permissible constant collector current of 6 amps. But I don't have such. In the old trash, I found KT838. In theory, it should work in this circuit without problems. But later, I replaced it with D209 because KT838 had a negligible current gain, only 6. The most popular transistor MJE13007 or 13009 can be used here. We also need a low power transformer that has a mains winding and a secondary winding for a voltage of 5 to 10 volts. I have such stuff in bulk. I must have a power of 10 to 15 watts or even less. The circuit has two diode rectifiers. One should be powerful enough. I advise with a current of 6 to 10 amps and a voltage of 400 volts. The other, a low power rectifier for a current of 1 to 2 amps. Alternatively, you can assemble a rectifier based on the popular 1 and 4007 diodes. I was reinsured and put 3 amp diodes. Well, we need a variable resistor from 680 ohm to 1 kilo ohm, a rectifier diode and a 2 watt resistor, apparently 20 ohm. But I put a 10 ohm one just because I found it at hand. The device is so simple that it can be assembled in a hinged way, but for safety, the printed board version is preferable, so I quickly made a board. Tired of home PCB technology? Or your PCB isn't as beautiful as you'd like? 
Company GLC will produce for you boards of any complexity and size. The minimum cost of a batch of 10 by 10 cm starts at $2, and the price doesn't change depending on the chosen color. Fast delivery, convenient payment methods, and the highest level quality are guaranteed. You will find a link to the GLC website in the description below the video. After complete assembly, I connected the device through a safety lamp, which will save if something goes wrong. In principle, everything worked, but the smoothness of the adjustment not as good as we wanted. The regulation works only on a small section of the variable resistor, and it is rather difficult to set the required voltage. After replacing KT838 with D209, the situation practically didn't change. The D209 has a gain of about 20. Next, I decided to add the circuit a simple reference source in the form of a Zener diode. This will give us what the circuit lacks so much, some kind of stabilization. Due to drops and surges of mains voltage, the output will wake in a wide range, and the control voltage will also change. With the addition of a Zener diode, we apply to the base of the transistor a part of the voltage that will drop across the Zener diode. It is also stable regardless of surges and drops in mains. In short, the simplest stabilization. The regulator was replaced with a less powerful one with a resistance of 2.2 kilo ohm. Further experiments was with the selection of Zener diodes. As a result, 4.7 volt Zener diode was used. By the way, such a solution will allow using less powerful variable resistors since some of the power goes off on a current limiting resistor for a Zener diode. But for this circuit, it is already necessary to use transistors with a decent current gain. MJE13009 or D209 is quite enough. With the addition of a Zener diode, one full turn of the resistor allows full adjustment from zero to maximum. Only a small section remains on the regulator, which doesn't change anything, but this is a trifle when compared with what was at the beginning. Let's compare the stabilization, smoothness, and step of adjustment before and after adding a Zener diode. The first multimeter shows what is at the input of the circuit, that is, in mains. The second shows what is at the output. Measurements are made with a 40 watt incandescent lamp as a load. First, we set the voltage at the output of the circuit to adopt 60 volts. When the input voltage changes in the range from 200 to 300 volts, the output voltage changes from 14 to 170 volts, that is, by 150 volts in total. Next, with the Zener diode, the output voltage is set to 80 volts. When the input voltage changes from 200 to 300 volts, the output changes as a whole by 25 to 30 volts. Well, of course, this cannot be called stabilization, but the result is obvious. Now, let's connect an oscilloscope to see if the sine shape is distorted. The yellow ray shows a sinusoid at the input of the circuit, that is, mains, the blue ray shows the output. As we see, the sinusoid isn't distorted. But the surprise was that the circuit still distorts the waveform if it, the output voltage is less than 100 to 120 volts. The output isn't quite a minder, but very close. Well, sad of course, but that's all that was possible. Moreover, I tried adjusting with and without the reference source. The result is the same. For adjusting the speed of an induction motor and the voltage of the transformer, this thing is not the best option. Depending on which transistor you choose, you may have to play around with a variable resistor to get the optimal adjustment range. The power transistor in the circuit works in a linear mode, therefore there will be heating. The lower the output voltage and the higher the current, the more the transistor will heat up. I recommend monitoring the power with a wattmeter, not to exceed the maximum power that the transistor can dissipate. And of course, the transistor must be installed on a massive radiator, and the substrate must be insulated, otherwise there will be a dangerous voltage on the radiator. What can I say at the end? The author's version of the circuit is completely working. 
The problems that arose in my case could be associated with other characteristics of the control transformer and the spread of the transistor parameters. In any case, when repeating the circuit, be ready that some component ratings will have to be selected empirically. Don't forget about safety and remember that the circuit is galvanically isolated from the mains. The output voltage is life-threatening. Be sure to use the line fuse. And once more, as I said earlier, this is a purely voltage regulator, not a stabilizer. That is, depending on the load and on the drops and surges in the mains voltage, the output will also vary. Can such a regulator replace ladder? Of course, no. The ladder regulates more smoothly, the efficiency is much greater, and it doesn't distort the signal shape. But the circuit can still find application. This video has come to an end. All the necessary links are in the description. If you have any additional questions, you're welcome to our official group. On this, I say goodbye. Until next time. With you was Kaisyan TV.